I'm Dave Titley. I'm the president and founder of RV Weather, and I'm doing this talk in cooperation with my good partners at WeatherCall. So, while this is a plan, grab your beer and run, it turns out that we can do a lot better for weather management. And in this talk, we're going to do the things that you can see on the screen there. We're going to talk about how good are the National Weather Service warnings. Uh, how can you use those warnings? What should you do with this information? And perhaps most importantly, what are the best ways that you can obtain this information so that you are weather aware? So why do we even try to manage Mother Nature? I mean, it's like, it's weather, it just happens. Really three things. You wanna protect the people who work for you. You wanna protect your staff. You certainly wanna protect your customers and your campers. And really you wanna protect your infrastructure to the degree that you can. And collectively, you're protecting your business, not only by doing the right thing from, from many perspectives, but frankly, you're also greatly reducing your liability with respect to extreme weather. So just a very quick uh, overview, if you will, of what kind of weather in the United States kills. Turns out that when you lump thunderstorms and lightning and tornadoes together, that's somewhere between 150 and 200 people each year lose their lives. Uh, heat, believe it or not, kills quite a few people, about 100 to 150. And flooding, water kills, 80 to 100 people in each year. Now, yes, there are winter storms and there are some other issues, but really for most of the campgrounds, those are of lesser concern. So we're really, really gonna talk today about the severe weather and the flooding and heat. One thing when I talk to people, uh, a lot of people here, either on the news or from friends or somebody, it's like, well, the weather's getting more extreme and they hear the word, it's unpredictable, it's unknowable. So is that true or false? And it turns out that's false. Uh, the Weather Service is actually really good at predicting these extremes. If you remember a few years back with Hurricane Harvey in Houston, days before the flooding started, the Weather Service was talking about three, four, even five feet of rain. Now, I'm not sure if anybody believed them before the rain started, but that was the forecast. Uh, similarly, just this past February, February of 2021, in uh, much of Texas, we had near historic cold. That cold was predicted well over a week in advance. The heat wave we had earlier this summer in the Pacific Northwest, same thing, multi-day warning period. And then if you look at the uh, flooding from former Hurricane Ida over New York City, that rainfall was also well predicted. Uh, what about tornado warnings? How, how do we do on those? And it turns out that if you kind of parse, if you will, or break up weak tornadoes from strong and violent tornadoes, we do pretty good on weak and we do a really good job with the strong and the violent tornadoes. So really, the tornadoes that potentially are going to kill you, those strong and violent ones, the Weather Service predicts 95% of them, and you get an average of 15 to 20 minutes of warning. So it's not a ton of time, but it is more than enough time for you to be able to save your life and your campers to save their lives. So one of the ways that both um, myself at RV Weather and my colleagues at Weather Call think about uh, how to put all this sort of weatherese together is a, a construct that's being used a lot in emergency management and in the wildfire community, and we think it's pretty effective. And it's just as simple as ready, set, go. We all remember from high school gym when we ran around the track and stuff and ready, set, go. That's really about the same, same thing here. Except in weatherese, the ready part is outlooks. And both uh, with weather call and with RV weather, we have very easy access to the, to the outlooks there. And you, there's a couple examples on the, uh, on the slide. Uh, get set. This means, hey guys, you know, more than just a general something could happen, now we're pretty sure something's going to happen. We may not know exactly where, exactly when, or exactly how strong it's gonna be, but we're pretty sure something is going to happen. So the example that I have here is a tornado watch uh, just this past fall, and you can see it covers all of Delaware, much of New Jersey, Eastern Pennsylvania, a good chunk of Maryland. So these are not small regions, and they're usually good for maybe six or eight hours or so, but everybody in there, it's like, get set. And then finally the go is the warning part, 
And again, these warnings now are much, much more specific. Usually they're maybe just part of one county or part of one or two counties. They may last for somewhere between 45 minutes to perhaps an hour or so. And if you're in those areas or what we call the polygons, we would ask that you take action right now to protect your life. So ready, set, go. So things to think about, what should you do? And you can see these uh, just kind of as, as suggestions of things you should think about on the, on the slide here. Notify your employees. They're not gonna know about this unless somebody tells them. So think about that. Think about in your internal operations, your lead times and your ability to get somebody back out. Like if you see an outlook with a high chance of severe weather that day, and you have people, let's say, working on a lake or working in a very remote part of your campground that it would take a long time to extract them, maybe today's not the day to do that. As you go into a watch, think about how do you tell your customers? How do you tell your campers? In a watch, are you sure your evacuation plans can work? So if you're, let's say your evacuation plan is, I use the bathhouses or I use a strong building, just verify, you know, the, the doors are open, they can be opened. It, in fact, will be able to accommodate the number of people that potentially are gonna be in there. Something that also is worth thinking about that maybe not everyone does is, think about your plan for after the storm. If the worst happens and the storm goes right over your campground, how do you make sure first that people are safe? How can you account for, uh, for both your staff and your campers? And then start thinking about what is the most uh, critical infrastructure to try to get restored and, and really sort of how can you work best with your first responders uh, uh, in, your, in your neighborhood there. And if nothing else, please, please, please remember that RVs are not a tornado shelter. If you remember nothing else, please remember that. So I said I was gonna give you some pro tips. So here's a, here's a couple of them. I mentioned those outlooks, remember the ready part? It turns out that for severe thunderstorms and tornadoes, the National Weather Service has like this gradation of actually six categories here. I'm not gonna go through all the categories, but I will tell you on those outlooks, if you see colors, I'll call them more than yellow. So I mean orange and reds and purples, pay attention. And the Weather Service has names for each of those. And honestly, sometimes those names almost understate the risk. So just if you see colors that are more than yellow, pay attention. Similarly, on a flood outlook, also from the National Weather Service, if you see reds and purples, that's pretty unusual. And that means that the Weather Service is thinking that bad things are gonna happen, so pay attention. And finally, my last pro tip here is on watches and warnings. If you hear the words that you can see on this slide, emergency, or the phrase particularly dangerous situation, life-threatening, extreme, this is the National Weather Service getting on the top of their roof, waving their arms around and saying, please, please, please pay attention to this and because these are the kinds of events that will kill people. So those are the words to really, really key in on here. So how to get this information? And I always ask people that they have multiple credible sources. Now a credible source may not be your grandfather's uncle who, who maybe looks at Facebook from time to time. NOAA Weather Radio. Uh, the good thing about that is you don't need internet. Uh, but all of these have their drawbacks too. Hazard call and hazard alarm. It's pretty much as bulletproof a system as you're going to, uh, going to find there. Uh, it is going to, to key in on your specific location and give you warnings written in English. RV weather, especially for your campers who are traveling across the country, this is a great way to have what I would call situational awareness of what the weather is going to be, not only at your campground, but perhaps in adjacent parts of your states or even in, in other states. Go to the National Weather Service website, weather.gov. You can get all the credible information there. Uh, local TV stations, if they employ a meteorologist, they're probably gonna be very good for your, your particular area. And I'll say just other reputable weather apps. So if it's like a brand name, then yeah, you can, you can look at those, those too. 
So I'm just going to show you a couple of screenshots here from both weathercall.com and rvweather.com. And you can see there, you know, if, if there's too much stuff on this slide, just go to those, uh, those URLs there. But on the top left for weather call, if you go under products, you can read all about hazard call and hazard alarm. So hazard alarm's kind of cool. It's basically this box. And if I can say it's idiot proof, I'll say it's idiot proof. It just kind of can be by your playground, by your swimming pool. And if you get lightning within six or 10 miles, you're gonna get a sound, you're gonna get flashing lights. If you get a tornado warning within there, you're gonna get red flashing lights and even more sounds. And as I mentioned for rvweather.com, you can see these outlooks and watches and warnings, and they're all under the forecasting part. And you can see on the, on the site where I've, where I've kind of dri uh, drawn, drawn attention to the specific part. So those are really two websites that are, that are useful. So really, in summary, in a very, very quick talk here, uh, remember please that extreme weather and life-threatening thre weather is predictable and is well predicted by the National Weather Service. We've talked about how to stay weather aware. Remember that ready, set, go concept. Have a plan. You know, President Eisenhower or General Eisenhower very famously said that while you'll never execute your plan, planning is everything. And if you have an idea of what to do, you're gonna be less stressed, less panicked. And if you're less panicked, your campers and your staff are gonna be less panicked too. And this is a risk you can manage. This is not just an act of God or an act of nature. You can manage this risk with these very simple tools here. Thank you very much.